Hi everyone, my name's George. This is my Aquascaper 1200 at home and I'm really excited to be able to give you a full update on this after it's been set up for about three months. I'll leave the link to the original setup right up there. So if you're new to my channel and you love aquascaping, planting tanks and inspirational aquariums then hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell and you'll never miss a thing. Okay, I'll just give you an overview of the whole system. Uh, number one question I get asked about this tank is what lights are these? So these are Kessel A360WE Tuna Sun. They're quite high end, they're quite expensive, but they are excellent. Um, the LED, like I said, they're a cluster LED, so lots of tiny LEDs on a small footprint. And there's a big lens that goes over those small LEDs that gives that spread. But because it's so point source, you get this amazing glitter effect, these glitter lines which is like being refracted by the surface movement of the water, gives these beautiful natural shadows, etc. So it's quite um, an acquired taste. Uh, some people find it a little bit distracting, a little bit too intense, but for me personally, I really like it. I think it just looks really natural. The aquarium itself, the Aquascaper 1200 by Evolution Aqua, measures 12 millimeters thick. It's super white, low iron glass. It's one of the lowest iron available glasses you can get, which makes it really transparent. And the idea is you're not limited by anything when you're viewing your aquascape. It's rimless, obviously, there's no hood. I love having, not having a hood. It just makes maintenance really easy. It allows you to look inside the aquarium from above, which gives it a whole new dimension. Uh, it has clear silicone. So again, minimizing any impact on the aquascape of the equipment. A lot of tanks tend to have black silicon, which I think is a little bit distracting. Here we've got the Aquascaper glass pipework set. So on the right there, we've got the inlet. This doubles up as a surface skimmer. And then on the left, we've got the outlet lily pipe, which is the classic design, designed to give some surface movement, but also give a laminar flow. So you're not generating too much turbulence, but you can get really effective circulation using powerful filters without disturbing the plants too much. Okay, let's take you through inside the cabinet. We've got two JBL 1501E green line external canister filters. These are rated at 1400 litres per hour each. So added together, that gives us 2800 litres per hour. This is about, the tank is about 300 litres. So we're almost at the magic 10 times turnover, which is what I recommend um, for most high energy aquascapes. Um, then we're going into uh, an inline heater here. This is just fitted in line with the filter hose on the outlet side. Um, 
it needs a clean. The, uh, the hose is supposed to be clear, but it's uh, a little bit mucky at the moment. Uh, CO2 wise, we've got a beautiful CO2 regulator here from Greenleaf Aquarium. So shout out to the guys there for supplying this to me. I do need to review it still. I've had it for a couple of years, so it's going to be the ultimate long-term review when I actually get around to doing it. Um, goes into a bubble counter. I'm running about three bubbles per second at the moment. It's turned off right now because just for the photography, um, I don't want the, the bubbles to miss the water too much. Um, got a five kilogram fire extinguisher, which lasts me probably about three or four months. Um, the, the regulator itself, dual stage, super high quality. Uh, we've got a solenoid there. The, the CO2 comes on two hours before the lights come on and an hour uh, before the lights go off, the, the CO2 goes off. Um, we've got our power supply units over there. That goes to the, um, to the two filters. We've got the Kessel spectral controller, which controls the lighting. And then we've got the solenoid um, timer at the top there, which is unplugged at the moment. And that's it guys, that's uh, relatively straightforward inside the cabinet. The lights themselves are run on an eight hour photo period, but I actually set the intensity of the left hand light there on 10% and then the right hand side is on 30% and the reason for that is as you can see there's a lot more plant mass on the right and so to kind of discourage the algae growth on the sand and the hardscape I deliberately run a much lower intensity on the left but interestingly the human eye oh and even the camera finds it hard to pick out the difference So let's talk about the aquascape in a bit more detail and the thought processes behind the evolution and the whole design etc. So as you can see it's a classic triangular design uh, with open cosmetic sand uh, foreground and left hand side and this just gives a really nice balance uh, we're using negative space which is the empty space here and at the front and we're using positive space the fuller spaces here and I think the the contrast between the two adds a really nice uh, balance, aesthetic balance. Um, a lot of my aquascapes are full on. They're, you know, almost, the tank is almost completely full of hardscape and plants. So I was quite keen to uh, try something a bit different with lots of open space, like you can see. So fish selection, you can see we've got 50 harlequins in there. Um, I am looking for potential tank mates, um, ideally Southeast Asian. So let me know in the comments uh, your ideas. Um, they have to be obviously compatible like I say, Southeast Asian. The plant-wise, um, it has evolved. I've added little touches here and there. I've moved a few plants around the touch. I've added some trident fern. Uh, the crypts are growing really well. I've added a couple of little crypts there in the foreground. Some more Buca philandra, uh, some Anubius pangolino, some mosses, which are doing really well. And then you can probably see the lily there on the left. Uh, it just adds a nice little touch of colour. I'll give you some close-ups of all the plants and I'll label them at the bottom of the screen so you can get a better idea of what they are. So just coming into focus now, we have the beautiful Bolbitis. This is just literally a couple of rhizomes that I've uh, removed from another plant and just attached them to the left hand, sorry, to the right hand side of the aquarium and literally wedged it between the rock and the glass and it's actually growing really slowly, but it's growing. And I just think it just, just a beautiful leaf texture and just helps add this extra sense of nature. Okay, over on the right there, you can see the crypts. I think this is Cryptocoryne pechii, or maybe my oya. It's, it's, um, it's a large crypt. 
I do get confused with the crypts. I think uh, even some of the suppliers get confused and mislabel them. So I think it's cryptic or any moyo. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on the limb and say that it is getting quite tall. In the background there, in the waving around top right of the screen just now, you can see cryptic or balansi. That's gonna get much taller and uh, droop across the surface of the aquarium. That's the idea. And then it's in the center of the screen right now. You can see classic java fern this is um, actually microsorum terrapus petite which was actually transferred from a, an old or uh, well, an existing long-term aquascape a 600 aquascape in aquarium gardens so shout out to dave pierce for, the, for letting me take some of the plants away and then on the left there you can see the classic uh, trident fern and i've deliberately tried to mix the ferns together to create this sort of complex more complex texture uh, just to add this more naturalistic feel to the aquascape. Okay, slap bang in the centre of the screen now is Hygrophila lancia, also known as Hygrophila aragui. Um, but yeah, you can attach this to decor as well, and it goes a deep crimson colour under good light. We are running limited lighting in here, so it probably just stays sort of a, uh, a, a browny green with a tinge of red. Centre of the screen again now, we've got the Anubius petite, classic Anubius species, really popular. We've got some Christmas moss at the bottom of the screen right now. Above the Christmas moss in the centre of the screen, this is the absolutely stunning Ricardia camadrifolia. Now it's not growing very compact in here right now because the lighting is limited, uh, but it is growing, it is staying alive, so I'm really happy. Can you see the little shrimplets crawling all over the Frodo stone right there? Yeah, it looks so cool. Let's get some close-ups of them for you. These are tiny. You can see the snails there for reference. So these shrimps are two three millimeters long probably there's absolutely hundreds of shrimp in here they're breeding really well and there's a close-up of the ricardia it should it should look more compact in a darker green than this but it's obviously struggling a little bit in the light you can see the shrimp out there just dropped his food i do have a bit of a snail issue as you can see uh, i'm thinking of getting some dwarf chain loaches in here or maybe some zebra loaches botia striata um, my only concern is they might nail the shrimp population. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, how do you deal with snail problems? Okay, here we've got a nice mixture of different Bucophilandra species and we've got some Anubius pangolino there on the left. You can just see the male cherry shrimp crawling up to it right now. And then just in the, planted in the sand substrate, I've got a couple of crypts there. I think this is Willisii. I'm not anticipating they'll grow particularly well. It, they're planted into cosmetic sand, so and it's not a very deep layer. I am feeding a comprehensive liquid fertiliser every day, so hopefully they will take and, and grow quite well. Just check out this shrimp population. We've got a right little community going on. And we've got yellow shrimp, we've got red. I'm not a purist breeder, so I do tend to uh, have different coloured shrimp in the same tank, and, and consequently you will, they will tend to revert to wild strains, although Every few generations you, you do find a, a super intense colour. So I'm just quite happy for them to mix and do their thing. Um, for me, the, the cherry shrimp, they, they are an added aesthetic, but they're actually a really important part of the maintenance crew. They eat the biofilm, the microflora, the microfauna in the aquarium, and just the acting act, action of them to grazing the surfaces constantly, I think helps to uh, avoid algae buildup. There we go. We've got a nice female shrimp there grazing away on the wood. And just at the top of the screen, you can see some Christmas moss just creeping over the wood there. Okay, here's a great shot of a yellow shrimp carrying eggs. You can actually see the eyes on the eggs. Look at that. I love this macro lens. I'm using a uh, 100 mil f2.8L Canon lens which is fantastic for these kind of shots. Some nice footage of the fish. Classic Harlequin Rosboras. T 
tend not to shoal too tightly now. They're all comfortable in there. They don't perceive any predators, so they're just swimming about really happily. You'll find that uh, when a fish shoals really tightly, it's a defense mechanism. It, it, it's um, law of averages. It's an individual's less likely going to be caught out if it's in a big group. Um, but when the fish gets really comfortable, it has no need to shoal, and that's why you, you know, classic shoaling species don't necessarily shoal all the time for you. Now, can you see the the sunbeams effectively coming through? Oh, look at that dirty glass. Sorry about that. And then we've got the lily in the background right there. You can see the oxygen bubbles. Here's a nice shot of a shrimp. Um, the wood it's on is actually red mangrove supplied from um, Estuary, a company in, from Scott Fellman. So do check out check out uh, Estuary. Also, uh, Scott does the Italian Aquatics brand, which some of you may have heard of. Um, you can see the pest snails there on the wood as well. Really quite annoying. I nearly forgot to tell you about the Cyprus Hell Ferry there in the background, the tall, kind of reedy looking plant, blowing gently in the circulation. And some of the leaves got really badly affected with black beard algae, so I just removed them. And we've got new growth there, which is super healthy, so I'm really pleased. I just love the way the, the colours of the harlequins contrast with the green, I think it looks really beautiful. So hardscape wise, we've got Frodo stone and manzanita wood. Uh, the manzanita wood has come over from America from my good friend Tom Barr and the Frodo stone has a special gift uh, from Adam Paskella who is the ADA Poland distributor. He has his own gallery in Tishy in Poland, a beautiful nature aquarium gallery. I was lucky enough to be invited over there a couple of years ago. I did some filming there, I'll link, I'll link to the video now and just just absolutely stunning aquascapes but I'm, I'm really happy with this it's really quite low maintenance I have been no excuses I have been lax on it I've not done a water change on it for about four weeks I did the first one in about four weeks last night in, in preparation for this video um, but as you can see the plants are healthy the fish are healthy and you know, the whole aquascape as a whole. It's just really appealing, I, I, I really love it. I'll sit on the settee and just stare at it, listen to some music and just relax. And that's what the hobby should all, you know, that's what it's all about, connecting with nature, relaxing, enjoying the hobby. And then the best thing for me is sharing it with you guys. Okay, that's it for the update video, but before I go, there's one really important thing I want to tell you all about, and it really, it's really quite a, a poignant message, if you like. Uh, yesterday, I had a comment from a teacher, a primary school teacher, so uh, I'll read the message out, and then I'm going to give her a special shout out. So, uh, the message says, hey George, this will make you laugh, I'm a primary school teacher, and have been showing my class your videos. Every morning, they now ask, has George got a new video out, and we check together. You, you even came up at parents' evening the other day as some of the kids are pestering their mums and dads to get aquariums. You're doing a brilliant job promoting this amazing hobby, George. Thank you for all the time and effort you put in. Uh, that's the best, without doubt, the single best comment I've ever had. Um, I appreciate all feedback. Even constructive criticism is really important. I, and I, lo I love, obviously, the positive comments. It, it helps to motivate me. But to, to get a comment like that, to 
to know that I'm inspiring young children who are going to potentially, you know, become aquascapers or even if they have a, a plant and aquarium at home, that's kind of my, my job done. So um, thank you so much. Okay, so hello Mr McGrath and his class, uh, which are 4am and they go to the Queen's School in Kew, uh, which is in London. So hello kids, thanks so much for watching. Uh, thank you to Mr McGrath for making the kids watch the videos. Um, such a cool teacher, you, you're very lucky kids to have such a cool teacher to let you watch YouTube in school time. So um, thanks to everyone who watches my videos again. I, I'm so passionate about this hobby and my aim is to promote aquascaping across the world. You can just help out just by watching my videos, subscribing if you haven't already, hit the like button and leave a comment if you can. Keep on scaping. Take care. Cheerio.